Hello, God bless you. This is another Believer's Communion and Anointing Service. I am David Agmona and this is David Agmona Ministries. Today we are going to be looking at the topic, Frogs and Propaganda. It's quite a title. That is what we are going to be looking at today. And then, uh, before we begin, we will take some time to pray as we usually do. We will take the communion after the message and then we will be anointed with oil. Good morning, Terry Lou. God bless you and everyone joining in. In a few minutes, I will be live streaming also on YouTube in addition to Facebook. So that if there's any network issue whatsoever, you can just go to YouTube. So, right now, let us begin with prayer. Let us give God thanks. It is important that we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So let us thank him for what he is doing for us today. Let us give him thanks for his mercies and his love. Let us thank him. He has done great things. He has done great things for us. Our God is good. While you sleep, God is engaged in battles for you. Give him thanks for that. God is fighting your battles. God has been keeping you. He has been protecting you. Even without you knowing it, thank him. Just say, Lord, I may not know all the things you have kept me safe from, but here I am to say, I am grateful. Here I am, I say, thank you. You are God. I worship you. You are good. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. He is God. He is God. I want you to thank him for the prayers he has answered. He has answered your prayers in times past. Remember those things you asked him for. Remember those things you asked him for and give him thanks. Say, Lord, thank you. Say, Lord, thank you. You did this for me. You provided me with this. You protected me. You blessed my family. You blessed my children. You guided me. Give him thanks. Give him praise. He is God. He loves you. And that is why he has been keeping you safe. Give him thanks. Say, Lord, I thank you for answering my prayers. I thank you for protection. I thank you for your, your, your guidance. I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for what you are doing in my life. I Thank you for what you are doing in my family, in my business, in my job. Thank you. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you. You are taking me to my destination. You are taking me to my destiny. I give you thanks. I give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise. He is God and there is none like him. He is God and there is none like him. Give him thanks. Give him thanks today. Give him thanks today. Give him thanks. I want you right now to thank the Lord even for the difficulties you have experienced. Those difficulties did not break you. God kept you from being broken by the difficulties you have experienced. Do you know some of the things you have gone through? When you look back, you are amazed that you actually went through them. Giving thanks that all the things the enemy threw at you, he made them work for your good. He gave you the grace and the power to overcome. I want you to give him thanks right now. Say, Lord, I thank you for what you are doing in my life. I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank him, thank him for what he is doing in your life. Thank him that the adversities did not crush you. So Lord, I thank you for when the enemy came in like a flood, your Holy Spirit lifted up a standard against the devil. I give you thanks in the name of Jesus. 
And now I want you to let go of every offense. Let go of every offense. I want you to let go of every offense. So I let go. In the name of Jesus, I let go of provocation. I let go of bitterness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I let go. I let go. I let go in Jesus' name. I want you to call the name of anyone you have been bitter with and say, I forgive. Just forgive them. Forgive them not because they have apologized, not because they deserve it, but forgive them because it is in your nature to forgive. You are a child of God. It is in your nature to forgive. And so you forgive them. Forgive them and let it go. In the name of Jesus. And now I want you to talk to God and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Confess your sins unto the Lord. Talk to him. Say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive the lust. Forgive the anger. Forgive the bitterness. Take bitterness and all. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are back on. Glory to God. Right now, I want you to continue. Just speak to God. Those things you have thought, those things you have said, those things you have done, ask him for forgiveness. Ask him for forgiveness. Say, Lord, I, I am sorry. Have mercy in the name of Jesus. Have mercy in the name of Jesus. And to ask the Lord to speak to you. Ask him to speak to you. Ask him to teach you today. Ask him to teach you today. Say, Lord, may the entrance of your word bring light into my heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives. We thank you for your protection. In the name of Jesus. Reveal yourself in the name of Jesus. We bind every evil spirit and force attacking this broadcast. We bind these evil spirits and forces in the name of Jesus. We forbid them from functioning. We decree clear transmission and reception of this service in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pardon the interruptions. I, I really, it wasn't on my end. Good morning, Laura Gil Martin. Good morning, Melanie. Good morning, Kami. I think well, it, the transmission was just going on and off from my side. Anyway, good morning, Jacqueline. So it's it's not from your side. I believe that the enemy was trying to interrupt this broadcast. But all the same, I am also um, simultaneously on YouTube. So if the Facebook feed gets interrupted, just jump over to YouTube. I'm doing the two at the same time. And by the grace of God, there will be no more interruptions in this service. The feed may have been going on and off on Facebook, but we are going to go ahead. Hallelujah. Okay, you're welcome, Eldon. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. So brethren, you pardon the feed is going on and off on Facebook. I think there, there is some form of interruption. It's not by me. The internet connection says it's good here and strong. So today we are going to be looking at a topic. Frogs and propaganda. Frogs and propaganda. We are going to see how we overcome the spirit of propaganda and, its, and how it attacks how it attacks us and what its purpose is. I'm going to begin by reading a scripture that describes what propaganda is all about and its purpose in these end times. Propaganda is simply, I'm not giving the dictionary definition, but I'm giving you the explanation of what it is. By the way, for those of you joining in who have not joined in before in our services, I am David Igbona and this is David Igbona Ministries. Our, our communion and anointing service. Rosemary uh, couldn't join us today for the praise session. We usually have a praise session after the prayer time, uh, but she sends her 
regards to our love to everyone. Revelations chapter 16, verse 13 to 14. I want to put it up as a comment. Revelations 16. It's a comment on Facebook anyway. Revelations 16, verse 13 to 14. Of the earth and of the whole world that gather to gather them to the battle of the great day of God. Of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says in Revelations, uh, it just keeps bouncing on and off on Facebook. Please, I don't need. I, it's it's funny, but I'm on YouTube also. In case your feed, you didn't miss much, Melanie. He, we just read Revelations chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. I'll read it again. And I saw, this is John speaking, and I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle, to, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Now these unclean spirits, they came out like frogs. They were in the form of frogs. Why is it that they were in the form of frogs? I'm going to explain something about frogs. Now, propaganda is simply uh, the transfer. Hallelujah. You're all welcome. welcome. I see uh, you've come on YouTube. Thank you very much, Kami. So, welcome, Lisa. Where propaganda is simply information being bombarded on a person or people to get them to think it's a a means of getting people to think the way you want them to it's a way of controlling the thought in society what they say it is that is what they say so it's those of you just joining on facebook this feed on facebook is just going on and off but i am on youtube live I'm live streaming also on YouTube at the same time. So if you're watching it anytime and you'll notice all this thing, just jump over to YouTube, David Ibona Ministries, the same name as the page. Now, propaganda is pushing these ideas into the people, controlling the thought pattern and process of the people to get them to act, think, and speak the way you want them to. It's usually done by governments. In these end times, the spirit of propaganda has been released by the, the devil, by the antichrist, by the false prophet. The false prophet is already around. The antichrist most likely is around. Hallelujah. Welcome, Eva Moon. Jacqueline, you're welcome. The antichrist is around. The spirit of the antichrist is around. And so they are pushing propaganda. They are pushing this idea into the people. To get them to think the way they want them to think. What you continuously hear, you continually hear, you will eventually believe. The devil knows that. That what you continuously hear, you will eventually believe. And if he can keep bombarding you with so many funny thoughts, if he can continue, if he can get you to constantly hear, to constantly hear this over and over again, he knows that he is going to get you to believe and you will act accordingly. And that is what he does through propaganda machine. And why is it that these spirits are like frogs? What are the characteristics of frogs? Number one, let's look at the frogs. Why these demons are like frogs? Frogs are in the midst of of water and the Bible explains to us that the Bible symbolizes the nations multitudes as water as ocean the Bible talks about a beast that rises out of the ocean all right that is symbolizing the multitude of the nations that the beast comes out from the nations. The beast system, the first beast to come out, came out from water, meaning the beast system first. And after that, you now have the beast itself, the individual, the, the, the uh, hybrid coming out 
as the beast. So now the frogs, they are, the frogs dwell and make their noise in water. And they repeat the same sound over and over again. Adolf Hitler, many of you know Adolf Hitler, welcome children, and everyone joining me, you're welcome on YouTube and Facebook. Adolf Hitler wrote a book called Mein Kampf. I hope I'm saying it well, but I'll put the name of the book as a comment. In that book, it was published in 1925, he shared his ideology, what he believed, and what made him come to the conclusion that he came to. So the book is actually Mein Kampf. In that book, Adolf Hitler said that propaganda must be used uh, in a repetitive form. He also mentioned that because they may target the imaginations and the feelings of the people, because most people do not take time to critically think of what they are saying, and that propaganda was to be repetitive, and that whichever direction the propaganda would go, it should come to the same conclusion. This is Adolf Hitler in 1925, publishing that book. Few years later, he became the head of the German government. And he had a man by the name Joseph Goebbels. Joseph Goebbels was the minister of propaganda and public enlightenment in the Third Reich. Goebbels employed this uh, the, the ideology of Adolf Hitler. They kept repeating that the Jews were the cause of the economic crisis, that Germany had to go to war, that the whole world was hostile to Germans, that the Aryan race, the Aryan race was the superior race, and every other race was to bow down. They kept repeating the same thing, and irrespective of what event took place, they will bring it back to the same conclusion that the German Aryan race needed to take control of the world. So if the economy went up, it will be evidence that the German Aryan race needed to control the world. If it went down, it would be that the Jews have messed up the economy and the German Aryan race needed to take control of the world. So either event, it came to the same conclusion. And the German people who were peace-loving and recovering from the First World War kept hearing it over and over again that they were cheated, that they lost the war due to uh, and bad leadership, they lost the war due to... The, he went to, uh, pardon the on and off stuff, it's not kicking you out, Melanie. It's being interrupted. It's, it, there's this there's interference going on in this live feed on Facebook. So if you're having issues, just go over to YouTube. The same name, David Ibona Ministries. It's being interfered with. Now, where was I? Okay. In today's world, let's go to in today's world. There is a target. The enemy wants people to have a mindset against the gospel. And he is coming in from different angles, just like it happened during the time of Germany. Hitler went on a spiritual level. He dedicated his soul to the devil. He went to where the, um, the, harper, the spear, the spear that pierced the side of Jesus, it was kept in a museum in one of these European countries. I don't remember which one exactly. I, I, I don't want to just guess now, but in one of the European countries, the spear that pierced the side of Jesus was kept. And it was believed that whoever possessed that spear would control the world, would rule the world. Hitler went there to where, before he became the Chancellor of Germany, he went to that place where the spear was kept. He looked at it and he desired, he gave, at that moment, he gave himself over to the spirit, uh, uh, to the devil. He gave himself over to an evil spirit. An evil spirit appeared to him and said it wanted his soul. And he gave his soul over to that spirit. And you know what? 
Hitler oratory skills backed by these frog demons together and he would come out and speak and the German people would be mesmerized before Hitler came out to speak he would go to the mirror he would look at himself and he would address the mirror as though he's addressing the people showing emotion showing everything he could show to make it look legitimate and then he had his own they are preparing for the great battle of Armageddon. I want you to know something. That preparing for Armageddon is not the way we think it is. That, okay, when the devil sees Jesus Christ coming, is then he gathers the crowd together and says, let's fight. He doesn't work that way. Satan has been preparing from the moment God created man. He knew his end will come. And he knew that there will be a judgment. And so he began to prepare and attack and attack the gospel. Yeah, welcome, Laura, on YouTube. I see uh, you all. God bless you. And now, today we are hearing of climate change. What is the goal of climate change? A lot of people are being carried away by the propaganda, being carried away by the uh, emotion. Hitler wrote something in that book, Men Kemp. He said propaganda should appeal to the feelings and imaginations of the people and it should be repeated in such a way as to discourage critical reasoning of what is being said. I'm no fan of Hitler's, but I, I, saw, I had to read what he wrote to understand why he was able to deceive people. And so today we have people that are coming out to say there's climate change. What's the objective of climate change? Climate change started as global warming, which began as Agenda 21. And they are behind schedule. By 2021, it was expected that the world would be in one world government, that a lot of things would have changed. Chapter 10, verse 10. Satan the thief does not, co does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan wants what God has given to you. Satan wants what God has given to you. Agenda 21, what is it all about? They call it sustainable growth and development. The agenda for sustainable growth and development. There's nothing sustainable and developing about that. They want to resize in it. Why did GMO corn have spermicide? GMO corn had spermicide so that people would eat the corn and be infertile. The aim has been to cut the world population. And so while they encourage wars and criminality, the same government that is fighting drugs is the same government that is dealing on drugs. You have it all around the world. They are coming after believers systematically. First of all, there is this propaganda that Christianity is not all inclusive that Christianity is not showing love. Showing love should be to accept everything that everyone does. Christians do not persecute those that disagree with them. They don't. But why is it that if there is this statement that goes around that Christianity is non-inclusive? Christianity is critical of everyone and everything. This is false. The aim of the enemy is to turn people against Christianity. You have these court, uh, court cases being started by um, so-called LGBT activists. There is a funny case in Canada where uh, a man who dresses like a woman to, uh, a, gen to a waxing shop where ladies' uh, pubic hairs are being caught and he demanded that his pubic hairs be cut. The lady refused because biologically he's a male. He still has the male organs. But this devil goes to Canadian court to sue this lady. It's all propaganda to make it look like Christians. It's speech. Brethren, I'm going to tell you something very interesting. All right? Shut the window. Be careful, don't tip. The rain is falling heavily. 
the death penalty has been reintroduced by the Trump administration. And it is, according to the president, it is for those who engage in hate speech. And if you go to the United States State Department, definition of anti-Semitism, it says whoever states that the Jews crucified Christ or speaks critical of anything done by the state of Israel is anti-Semitic. Brethren, the Bible based on that definition is anti-Semitic. Based on that definition, the Bible is anti-Semitic. We are dealing with a propaganda machine. And you know what? A lot of people are flowing along and saying, if you criticize the nation of Israel, you are criti criticizing God. And all manner of funny things they say. You criticize anything Israel does, you are hateful of the Jews. I want to say this, that according to the Holocaust, and by the way, according to this, you can research the State Department definition of anti-Semitism says, if you question the official figure of six million Jews that were, that were said to be gassed and killed, in prayer and be prepared, you are going to be swept by surprise. Because people are constantly hearing this, that if you say anything negative about Israel, you are anti-Semitic. Every nation has a deep state. Nigeria has a deep state. America has a deep state. Israel has a deep state called the Zionists, the Talmudic Zionists. America has its military industrial complex. Every nation has a deep state because the devil is in all nations. But right now, the propaganda is coming up against Christianity. It's coming up through the media, criticizing uh, uh, Christians for being hateful. A Christian should not be forced to do what he doesn't believe. If a Christian should be fo forced to do something he or she does not believe, then every other person should also be forced to conform. To conform. Christians do not force homosexuals to live their life, their lifestyle, and become Christians. So homosexuals should not force Christians to accept that lifestyle. Everyone should have freedom of speech and thought. History keeps repeating itself because people are not studying history. There is so much emphasis on anti-Semitism. Criticizing the nation of Israel is criticizing God. There is nowhere in the scripture that that is encouraged. There is a new Israel. The was made to Abraham's seed. God said to Abraham, in you and in your seed shall what? All the nations of the earth be blessed. Not one single nation. All the nations of the earth. When God was making that promise, he was speaking to the church that would come. The church is born by faith. Abraham received righteousness not according to the law, but according to faith. To enforce Talmudic law, to enforce Noahide laws that are contrary to humanity. They call it Noahide. Well, in other videos you will see it, where I spoke about uh, uh, Israel and the church. You was going to see a lot about it, the Talmudic law and what they are trying to do. It's happening. It's coming from various areas. It's not just about the Talmudic law. Communism is coming. It's rising around the world. Communism is rising. And it's coming through propaganda. The climate change hoax. People screaming that the earth is about to burn. According to our goal, by 2013, the earth should have been burning up. When they saw that the temperature, our God, the former vice president of America, he was vice to Clinton. When they saw that the thing was not holding up, they now changed it to climate change because in some areas there was extreme cold. But whichever way the propaganda swung to, the conclusion was the same. Give up space, Agenda 21. 
that mankind is a parasite on earth, that they need to carve out more space for wild animals. And man should, the number of human beings should be reduced. There should be depopulation. And again, people should cut down the consumption of energy, the use of fossil fuels, the use of whatever thing, even sunlight. People were to cut down the use of sunlight. It's illegal to collect rainwater. The Bible says that the earth is in water and on top of water. The most painful part is when the devil, through his agents, are already pushing for recycling of water, of sewage water. That's human waste water. They want to recycle it and give it to the people to drink. Because according to them, water is becoming scarce. So, yeah. Let me put it as a comment. Isaiah 52 verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Good. You see that? I'm going to show you something about the feet. It's, the Bible says the feet are beautiful of he that says to Zion. Your God reigns that proclaims good news. There is information. There is information from God, coming from God in these end times that counters this propaganda. Sorry. I want to send a message. Okay. It counters this propaganda. It is the word of God. The Bible describes it as good news the gospel it counters it because while the enemy wants you to believe the lies the word of god makes it clear that the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof there is no cause for alarm there is no cause for fear god is on the throne he is on the throne. Let me put this thing as a comment now. Isaiah 52 verse 7. It's a comment on Facebook. Okay. All right. So the feet of he that brings good news, they are beautiful. You know why? Because the feet symbolizes reasoning. All right. Sorry for those of you who are on Facebook. It goes on and off. You can always migrate to uh, YouTube. Go over to YouTube. I'm live streaming also. The feet symbolizes your reasoning and your that is your perception of things. How you your the information at your disposal. It ha it has a connection to the feet. It's funny, but that is it to the feet. The Bible says that beautiful are the feet of they that present good news, that say to Zion, your God reigns. That is the informed and those that inform others of God's truth. Their feet is good. It's beautiful. When God appeared to Moses at the burning bush, he asked Moses to take his shoes off because Moses was standing on holy ground. That was a message to Moses that Moses' assignment is going to be something that is not what he has been intellectually trained for. It's going to be something that he would need divine intervention, divine guidance. And the same thing happened in the book of Joshua. When Joshua was about to uh, engage Jericho in a battle, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joshua and said to Joshua, Take your shoes off. Where you stand is holy ground. And Joshua was given very unconventional instructions on how to fight Jericho. Just to walk around the city once for six days. On the seventh day, go around seven times and shout. And the walls came down. I explained that in a video I did on pyramids. Now, let's look at something. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15. The Bible says, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15. 
When speaking about the armor of God, the Bible speaks about the gospel of the feet. It says, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Having, you, having worn the shoe of the preparation of the gospel of peace. So your shoes has to do with the Roman soldiers had something about their shoes. The shoes of the Roman soldiers had spikes. They were spikes, just like a football boot. Tiny things that protrude down, they just go down. And these shoes were made that way so that when the soldier stands, he is firm on the ground and he is able to engage in battle. He will not slip. The Bible says, he that keeps you will not allow your foot to, he will not allow your foot to slip. Right? So, when you stand on the word of God, you stand firm. That is where the feet has to do with the word of God. Jesus said something to Peter. He said, he that is already washed has no need of being washed again, but only that his feet should be washed. Jesus was saying, when you are born again, you have been washed from head to toe. You have been cleansed of your sin. But there is one thing that you need to constantly wash your feet. Constantly ensure that you are walking in revelation. Walking in the light of his word. That is your feet. Let's look at Matthew. Sorry, Luke chapter 8 verse 18. Here Jesus addresses propaganda. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. Jesus addresses the issue of propaganda. Do you want to read? Okay, come and sit down. We can open it here. He speaks directly to us about propaganda. We should be careful the source of information just as much as the information that we get. Are you ready? Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Okay? Luke chapter 8, verse 18. Pardon me, Luke chapter 8, verse 18. Are you there, David? Luke chapter 8, verse 18. It says here, Therefore take heed how you hear. For whoever has to him, has to him more will be given. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have will be taken from him. Okay. So now be careful how you hear. Be careful how you hear. It is very important. Luke chapter 8, verse 18. I made a mistake of saying 18. Sorry. Luke 8, 18. Be careful how you hear. Be careful with the source of information you get. Be careful with the information you get. Be careful with what you hear. Because there are spirits that have gone out to turn people against the gospel. To turn people against Messiah. To turn people against Christians all over the world. There is a movement through propaganda. There was a movie that was almost released, The Deplorables. In which people were killed, uh, killing uh, Americans from... It was to be released. I don't know if it is still going to be released. That is propaganda. Propaganda goes through various means. Propaganda goes through the news media. Much of the world's news media is owned by six corporations. It goes in 1917, I believe, there was a meeting amongst the JP Morgans, Rockefellers, and so on. Listen to the news. When you are uh, if you, you definitely have to listen to the news. When you are listening to the news, listen through the word of God. Filter these things coming in with the word of God. That is why Jesus said, be careful how you hear. Are you listening based on what you were taught in school, that whatsoever you see on television, you believe? Richard Nixon, former president of America, said, if it is not on television, the American people will not believe. Filter every information, everything you are getting with the word of God. When they are screaming climate change, we are short of water. 
the word of God clearly states that the earth is in water and on water, so there can't be any water shortage. When, the, when people are screaming that the climate is about to explode, the Bible says that the word of God upholds the earth. That is, the earth cannot self-destruct. God is the one upholding this earth, and he keeps holding it up. When the propaganda is on violence, you see there's a lot of violence in our movies. Propaganda, as I said, goes through the news media, it goes through the entertainment industry. Movies, sports. Sports, movies, is propaganda. You see, they prep up movie stars who have sold themselves over to the devil. They prep them and make them wealthy, feature them in many movies, and then a movie star comes out and tells you that you all need to abandon your cars and go on public transport because the earth is about to burn off. i give you an example, Leonardo DiCaprio, who flies his private jet to a meeting and in the meeting says that people should cut down their use of fuels. Why didn't he enter a public transport? Uh, a, a, a public, a, a, a plane, commercial plane. Why did it fly commercial? Uh, fossil fuels are destroying the climate. She shouldn't use a boat. She should use a canoe with a paddle. That way she doesn't burn off any fuel. She doesn't use this. She doesn't use any kind of fuel. She just uses her hand. She paddles across the Atlantic to protest that the climate is about to be destroyed. All these are propaganda to whip up sentiments. The aim of propaganda is to stop you from critically examining what you are being told and be emotional towards it. It's for it to apply to your feelings, apply to your imagination. Main Kampf, the book by Adolf Hitler, he says propaganda should appeal to the imagination of the people because the vast majority of the people do not critically examine what they are told. So propaganda is aimed at the vast majority to make them stand up and give them a voice to make it look like it's true. Jesus says, be careful how. How? How are you receiving information? Entertainment is part of propaganda. Education is part of propaganda. Children are being taught. In fact, just look at society. Those that were born in the 90s, why are they more receptive to communism? Why are they more receptive to communism? Why are they willing to give up their rights to the government? Because the education system from the 90s to the uh, uh, of, of uh, the 21st century was all about how the earth is dying, how the earth is mismanaged, how much the government needs the cooperation of the people. It so much emphasizes the people are unable to govern themselves and they need the government. And that is why communism is growing fast among the nations. They don't need a red flag. Measles epidemic. Everyone needs to get their measles shot. I had measles as a child. I was vaccinated. And then I had it again as a teenager. I didn't die. It came, it left. In fact, the second time I had measles, <laughs> the treatment was pretty funny. There's this uh, um, drink made from palm fruits. It's called palm wine. It's tapped from the palm tree. It was poured on my body. They would take some of it in their hand, rub it on my body, give me a little to drink, and that was how the measles was burnt off, naturally, through palm wine. It wasn't something that everybody in the house had to wear special suits. I was sleeping with every other person, and they did not contact the measles. But now it is being spread as an epidemic. The whole world is going measles. We need to vaccinate. Okay, if you vaccinate, why are you afraid of the person unvaccinated? Because you are supposed to be immune to this thing. If you are not immune, 
But then what's the point? I'm not against vaccination. I told you I was vaccinated. I vaccinated my children to an extent. To an extent, they were vaccinated. Let's be careful with the propaganda. Let's be careful. Let's see things through the word of God. Let's see things according to the word, what the word of God says. Whatsoever information that comes, we must filter it with the word. And that is why we must be grounded in scripture. One other way propaganda is spreading against Christianity is right there in the church. Right there in the front. A lot of antichrist propaganda. Let's look at it. Beginning from the structure of many churches, I know there are pastors that are watching, there are ministers of the gospel watching. I want you to see this. The modern day church structure is not the same as the church structure of the early church. Modern day churches are more like someone moves from one sexual partner to the other. And if we believe that there is one Lord, one gospel, one church, then moving from one denomination to the other is in no way prostitution, spiritual prostitution, because you are in the body of Christ. But this is the message that is being preached from the pulpit. If you leave this congregation, you are a spiritual prostitute. It is so anti christ Because a lot of people are now in bondage. I asked the uh, pastor, I said, okay, now, how many of your members, your church members, were never members of another church? He couldn't give me a figure. Because most of his members came from other churches. He came from another church. And so if you say that anyone that leaves your church is a spiritual prostitute, that means you are the first spiritual prostitute because you left someone's church to start your own. In fact, you are not just a spiritual prostitute, you are a spiritual pimp because you are training spiritual prostitutes. We, this, you see, there are churches that are contrary to God. And if people are told that they cannot leave that particular denomination, if they leave the denomination, they have left the faith. It will insulate them against the gospel. It is going to make them angry. It's going to make them frustrated. And you now have an organization that is aimed at defying the leadership. Let's look at it. Look at the structure now. In, a, in, in many churches, the senior pastor is called daddy. Even by those that are senior to him in age, he's called daddy. The pastor's wife, even if she got born again the day before, she's called mommy. And as your father and as your mother, you say you have one father, that is God. He doesn't say you shouldn't regard your earthly parents with respect. You are to. But he's telling us that we should not look at a human being as our spiritual father. We should look at God as our spiritual father because we are all children. But today's churches are structured in a way that makes the pastor a dictator. He owns the congregation. I was listening to a denomination that has over 700,000 members with tens of, if not hundreds of thousands of branches. And they were saying that if parents endorse the marriage of, a, of the children and the pastor over them does not endorse that marriage, that marriage should not hold. Where is that in scripture? Where is that in scripture? A lot of the structure of churches is not from the Bible. It has been handed over to ensure that there will be spiritual dryness because the, where the Bible says where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. If you take liberty from the people, the Spirit of God goes. And so you have a lot of churches that are, that are void of the Spirit of God. And you now have backbiting and politics because they have taken the freedoms from the people. And the Spirit of God will not dwell in an environment of bondage. And so he leaves. And what happens? Unclean spirits go in. And doctrines that deify ministers of the gospel are being pushed. Hey, Rachel, you can't hear me? Okay, go over to YouTube. David Ibrahim Ministries on YouTube. 
Rachel, you should hear me there. I don't know. Facebook has just been going. There's been interference on Facebook, so you can always. Now, um, <laughs> we need to take church structure back to high us. There are lots of people that don't know that there are five-fold ministry offices, the five kinds of full-time ministers. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Each one has his own style. Each one has his own way of fit the spirit of propaganda. Okay. Thank you, Mary Quartz. How do you defeat the spirit of propaganda? Through the word of God. You have to filter every information, everything you were taught in school through the word of God. Through the word of God. I want to say this. The word of God speaks concerning everything that has ever happened, is happening and will happen. The word of God is clear. The word of God is clear. We need to go to the scriptures and spend time studying the word of God. I'm glad for those of you who follow me on Facebook and on YouTube. And you are blessed by these teachings. One way you can help others is to share them. Because there is a scarcity of the true word of God. The true word of God makes you free. Whom the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. The Word of God frees you, frees your mind, not to roam intellectually, but to know that no matter what happens, God is in control. That God has already defeated the devil. Jesus has already conquered the devil. The New World Order has already lost the battle. For this earth. No, this earth has been decreed, already set aside for destruction. We are preparing for the new earth and the new heaven that God is, God is building for us. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. I'm going to round up this message by telling you this. If you read the Bible, where the... Okay, Facebook is back on. Sorry, guys. There is interference. Uh, when, let me just repeat myself for those on Facebook. When Peter ran to the tomb where Jesus was buried, he saw the body was not there. And he saw that the napkin that was used to wrap the face of Christ, not the one wrapped, that wrapped his body, the one that wrapped his face, had been folded and kept. The Bible mentions it that it was folded and kept aside. You know why? The tradition of the Jews at that time was when a master was eating, if he got up, maybe to go get something, go ease himself or anything, if he got up from the table and left his food, the food, he left the table, and the napkin was folded, the servant will watch. If the napkin is folded, it says to the servant, I am coming back. But if the napkin, let's use this as an example, if the napkin is tossed on the table, it means the master is done. But when the napkin is folded and left on the table, it means I am returning. The napkin was placed where the head of Jesus was. Jesus was passing a message. The message was this, I have resurrected, I have saved you, and I am coming back to get you. And that is the message Christ left for the church. He us and he is coming back to save us and to judge this world and to destroy those that destroy the earth. Please be careful how you receive information. Screen everything through the word of God. Let the word of God abide in your heart. Father, I thank you for your word. May your word abide in our hearts. Give us wisdom and understanding of your word. 
Deliver us from ignorance. God cause them to fail in the house of the righteous. Cause these evil spirits of propaganda, these frog-like spirits, cause them not to find their way to the house of the righteous. Give us strength and understanding that you are above and you reign and you rule. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we are going to be taking the communion. We are going to be breaking bread. One characteristic I forgot to mention, uh, to explain. Okay, I think I explained it, that frogs walk in the darkness. Darkness symbolizes ignorance. So these unclean spirits like frogs, they walk through ignorance. They are able to gain control and access to people through their ignorance. Hold on to the word of God. Study the word of God. Stay away from messages that are not changing you. Not make desire, making you desire God more. Amen. And now before we take the communion, I want to pray for everyone who is not born again. If you are not a Christian, if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are not a believer in Yeshua, his Hebrew name, Yeshua, because I know people from Israel and are watching, and Arabs are also watching. It's an opportunity for you to pray. Because the moment you give your heart to Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit in you, and he is in you to guide you into all truth, to teach you, to reveal to you the word of God. So pray with me, just repeat after me, or say it in your own words. Lord God Almighty, repeat after me, Lord God Almighty. Surrender my heart to you. I confess I have been a sinner. And now I repent of my sins and my ways. I confess and accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Write my name in the book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Even from now on, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are born again. You are born again. You are already washed head to toe. You don't need to be washed again. Even if you go back to the world, you are still born again. What you need is for your feet to be washed. Jesus said, he that is washed only needs to be washed once. Thereafter, his feet. You need to wash your reasoning, your understanding, your perception with the water, with the word of God. Constantly cleanse yourself with the word of God. Cleanse your mentality with the word of God. And now, as we take this communion, every one of you who has a health and spiritual challenge, you are going to use this as a point of contact for your healing and deliverance. We are partaking in the body of Jesus Christ. And anything that is damaged, anything that is lacking in you, you have a right to a new one in Christ. Because you all benefit from the body of Christ. It is your right to the body of Christ. Right? Anything you need is in Jesus. And so you say, as I partake of this communion, my, I change kidneys. I get a new kidney from Jesus. I get a new spleen. I get a new tonsil. My lungs are healed. My, my chest is healed. Eyesight healed. Everything healed. Your deliverance, sure. Whatsoever is not in the body of Jesus. Sin, failure, frustration, divorce. Will cease from your life. Everything the enemy stole from you will get a replacement. That is what we believe when we take the communion. Jesus commanded us to take on living bread as a symbol of his body in us. Lord, we thank you for every unliving bread and wafer lifted unto you. We ask, Lord, that you bless it. And that even from now it shall be the body of Jesus which was broken for us by you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you take from the bread and eat it.
Jesus commanded us to do it. The first communion was taken while Christ was still on earth physically. You are welcome everyone joining on Facebook and on YouTube. I am David Agbona. This is David Agbona Ministries. Our Sunday service, communion and anointing service. We do it every Sunday. 2 p.m. GMT, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. London, 7 p.m. Pakistan Time. So, we look at it. Now we are going to take uh, a cup. Jesus took the cup and he said, take drink. This is my blood of the new covenant. All right? If you do not have fruit juice, put some water in the cup or non-alcoholic wine, but your fluid should be non-alcoholic. You put it in a cup and you lift it up to God. We are going to pray. You must not. We are together in the presence of God. I see people from several nations. We are all together in the presence of God. We have gathered together. Father, I thank you for every cup lifted. We receive the blood of Jesus into us. We receive the transfusion of blood. The DNA of Christ, we receive it in Jesus' name. The life of flesh is in the blood. Lord, fill us with the life of Christ, that we may live the life of Christ. That we, O oh God, will resist the devil and will flee from us. That we will walk in submission to your will. We will walk in righteousness and holiness. Because that is the nature of Jesus. And Lord, as we take this cup, we are and then we go for the anointing oil. I want to apologize to those of you watching Facebook had uh, been interfered. See, there's been a lot of interference on the Facebook feed. It keeps going on and off. But I live streamed on YouTube the same topic, frogs and propaganda. So you can also watch it on YouTube as well, David Ibona Ministries. And you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. You click on the subscribe button below the video. If you've not done so before, Click on the subscribe button below. A notification sign will appear. Bell notification sign. Click on that bell notification sign. And so anytime I upload a video, you are informed. Those of you on Facebook who have not liked and followed my page, please do so. Like the page. Click on follow. You see options will appear. Click on see first. That way you'll be able to get past the algorithm and get information and get the posts that I make as soon as I do them, videos and non-videos. And please give this video on YouTube, on Facebook, a thumbs up because the more the thumbs up, the more YouTube circulates and Facebook circulates the video. So the video, get they, they tend to study people's reactions. So when there are lots of thumbs up, it shows uh, in the YouTube feeds. And people get to be blessed, even those that have, that have never subscribed before. So please, thumbs up. Your comments are appreciated. You like and you share the video, please. And so we take the anointing oil. It is very important. The Bible says that Jesus sent uh, the apostles out and anointed the sick, and the sick recovered. Right, they anointed the sick and the sick recovered. The Bible says in James chapter 5 is if there's any sick amongst you, you should be anointed with oil and and will recover. So the anointing oil also symbolizes the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? Your vehicle, either your vehicle engine or whichever part, and you say, Lord, may your presence be upon. Uh, my equipment, my vehicles. The Bible says, by reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken. So every yoke in your life is broken. Every demonic yoke, that thing around the neck, 
that was placed on slaves is broken because of the anointing. The Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Every believer is anointed by God. You are anointed with the Holy Spirit. So it's not just the minister that's anointed. I'm a minister of the gospel, but I am I'm not claiming to be the only one anointed and you are not. You are anointed as well. So you are the Lord's anointed and the devil cannot touch you. Lift up your oil. It could be olive oil. It could be cooking oil that has not yet been used. Just lift it up. I'm going to pray. Lord, thank you for the oil lifted up to you. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus. We ask that you fill this oil with your power and you turn this oil from ordinary olive oil to holy anointing oil. From ordinary cooking oil or whatever oil to holy anointing oil. And we pray as we anoint ourselves and our properties and uh, the things we want to anoint, we pray, Lord, that your power and your presence will go with us. We pray, Father, that the sick will be healed. The oppressed will be set free. Those that are having difficulty understanding scriptures, those that are having a, a, a mental yoke, a yoke around their mind, keeping them from understanding the scriptures, we break those yokes now in the name of Jesus. We, we ask, Lord, that the yokes will fall off be broken as they are anointed. Give everyone understanding of your word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And we pray that your divine protection will go with us. We rebuke vehicular accidents in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every form of accident in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Take some of the oil, place it on your head and say, I receive it in Jesus' name. And I want to thank every one of you who has been commenting, participating in these services, who has been uh, sending messages and who have been praying for us. Thank you, stream. Whenever I am live, you are also ministering. It's not just me. Because you are funding this gospel being spread, the gospel of the kingdom. So I am not the only one ministry. Those of you who are praying for me, those of you who are sending funds to this ministry, you are ministering as well. And the reward God gives, he gives to me, he gives to you. God is rewarding you just as though you are sitting in front of the screen, reaching tens of thousands and millions. God is blessing you as though you are standing in front of large crowds because your giving is securing that reward for you. You are blessed. And I love to hear from you. If you have questions on this teaching and other teachings, you could send it to me as uh, a message through my page on Facebook, David Ivanon Ministries, or you could send me an email, David Ivanon Ministries at gmail.com. I don't yet have a website, but I'm hoping we'll have one soon. Okay, go find me. Yeah, I see a comment.